Social networks are just graphs, like the kinds of graphs we've been studying, but the real-world networks that you actually find have some distinctive properties, and these have been documented by researchers like Duncan Watts and, and others. One property of these graphs is that they tend to exhibit the small world phenomenon, which essentially means that there's short paths between arbitrary nodes in the graph. Another is that they're clickish, which means they exhibit a high clustering coefficient. I'm going to illustrate these two properties next. So this is me, essentially. I live in Bernersville, New Jersey. This is Chris M. He lives in Wellesley, Massachusetts, and he's very tall. Finally, this is Chris S. And I'm not sure exactly where he lives, but I'm going to say New Brunswick, New Jersey. So last summer, Chris S. and Chris M. were both at the New Jersey shore at the same time, and they got together for drinks. Chris S. told Chris M. that he worked at Rutgers University, and Chris M. said, oh, do you know Michael Littman? And Chris S. said, actually, yes, small world. So it turned out that Chris S. was connected to me. We both worked at Rutgers and had worked on a project together, and Chris Metcalf and I went to the same undergraduate institution and were friends doing computer science -y stuff. And here are these two random people meeting in some faraway place, hundreds of miles away from where they live, and they had this connection between them. And, and what we say when this sort of thing happens is like, it's sort of a small world. Even though there's lots of people in lots of places, people are not as foreign to us as we might think. So the classic example of this kind of effect was from the experiment by Stanley Milgram. He very coarsely estimated that any person in the U.S. was just five or six steps away from any other. And this gave rise to what we now think of as being the idea of six degrees of separation. In graph theoretic terms, what we say is that a graph exhibits the small world phenomenon if nodes have relatively small degree, but also a relatively short path to other arbitrary nodes. And social networks seem to exhibit exactly this property. So just to get you thinking about the degree of different graphs and the path lengths in different graphs, here's four different kinds of graphs we've talked about before. A clique, where all the nodes are connected to each other. A ring, where the nodes are connected into a ring. A balanced tree, where you have a tree structure, but the, there's a node that kind of separates the other nodes into these two different components that are about the same size. And a hypercube, like this uh, three-dimensional hypercube. And what I'd like you to do is think about, in an end node version of that graph, what is the degree, is it, uh, and what is the path length between, uh, sort of the longest path length in the graph as a function of the number of nodes. Is it constant, it doesn't depend on the number of nodes in the graph? Is it logarithmic, or is it linear? So a graph that has low degree might be, you know, one or log n, and that it has short paths might be o, o of one or log n. So which properties do these graphs exhibit?